Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial and for today's project I'm going to show you how to make these crystal feather earrings. They're really light, they're really elegant looking, really pretty. You can actually make these in all kinds of colors. They're not heavy weight so they won't weigh down your ears. But they're really easy to make, they go together quite quickly and all it is is a little bit of brick stitch and some dangles. I am going to finish making this one for the tutorial so this will be the mate to this orange colored one. It's really pretty orange and I got a light hint of brown in that. Coppery brown. So that's today's project. Crystal feather earrings. And for this today you're going to need, and I'm just going to tell you um, the basic supplies. I'm not going to count out seed beads. To keep my videos free, um, my tutorials free, please don't expect me to count out every seed bead that I use because that I just don't have time for that. Um, you can kind of roughly estimate, you know, that's not going to take a whole ton of seed beads. It's just a very small project. So I'm not going to sit here and count them. So for this, uh, for two pairs of earrings, or one pair of earrings for both pieces, you will need 18 um, 3 millimeter crystals in a bicone or whatever crystals you want to use. I'm using um, Swarovski's. So I'm using um, 3 millimeter orange. It's like a hyacinth orange, some kind of color. And then I'm using these um, kind of like a funky kind of hex shaped bead. It's not bicone, it's not round. It's just really different kind of a bead. I'm um, using uh, three colors of Toho seed beads. I have this in like a light pale orange. I think it's called Ceylon Tomato Soup, this color. And I have a uh, silver line luster rainbow color here. It's not quite clear. It's got like a rainbow finish on it. And this too brown color, coppery color, has also a rainbow finish on it as well. But it's like a brownish copper and I don't know what color that is because it's not on my box. And I'm using another uh, color of 3 millimeter bicones and this is just a crystal AB. And that's, ba oh and you're going to need two earring hooks. I use uh, sterling silver earring hooks. So I'm using um, just a plain ear wire with a little ball on it. I'm using a size 12 beading needle and I recommend you use Nymo thread for this project and the reason you shouldn't use fire line is because when you go to hang your dangles down like this the, the Nymo thread lays very flat and it won't bunch your beads up. Fire line will bunch these beads up and they're not going to lay nice like this. So I suggest not using fire line. Use some kind of really flimsy thread. Nymo the best. Uh, Ceylon might work too. That's long. All right, and you will need a pair of scissors and you will need two uh, chain nose pliers just to open your ear hook. That's all that's for. And I was thinking too that you could even use something like um, this. These are little butterflies. At the end of your earring as well, you could use these instead of a crystal. I was originally going to use these and then I thought, well, I'll try the crystals. So. I'm going to try a pair in the white and the black and I'll post them when I get them done. So for this project you ain't going to need a lot of supplies for these earrings so I'll let you gather all your materials and I will meet you back here. Okay to get started I strung a good yard and quarter maybe yard and a half of Fireline or Nymo on my needle and I'm using a size 12 I told you and the reason you need a size 12 is you have to go through your beads quite a bit so you don't want to try that with a size 10 because you're definitely going to break it. Now on in this design you're going to have to decipher what color you want for your middle so let me take the blue ones as they're a little more clear. I have white here and the blue trimmed and the this color here the luster color on the outside of the blue so and that's the color I remained using in the whole entire earring so um, you have to decide what you're going to use as a main color and this clear is going to be my main color so you're going to pick up one clear and one of your other colors and you're going to bring these down 
Leave yourself a long enough tail to thread a needle and weave your ends back in. So from the tail back, because we have to do the first row as a ladder stitch row. In order to do brick stitch, we have to do at least a ladder stitch row on this kind of flat stuff. So from your tail up, you're going to go into your first bead you put on and skip that one. Don't go into that one again. Okay? And then line them up side by side. Now this, this particular row we are going to reinforce every single bead we put on. So go back into all your beads. Again. And then back in to this bead so we can add another one. So this is what you have them sitting side by side. Now you're going to pick up your other color and we're going to put five of that color on. So I'm just going to grab some here. So kind of pinch um, kind of pinch this between your fingers just to hold it. It's going to be hard for you to see in the camera because I have to pinch these tiny beads in my fingers. So pick up one of your other color and make a circle and go back through like so and then go back up into that bead and now we're going to reinforce it <clears throat> so go back in <clears throat> that bead there and then go back up into this bead you just put on and pull tight so this row we have to keep it pretty secure and this is the one we're going to go back in a few times now pick up another of your same color and go back through and we're going to attach this one in the latter sense. Go back down through that bead because we're just reinforcing it. Go back up into this bead and then go back down in here so we can get into position to add another bead. There's going to be nine beads across in total. Okay, so we have four beads and we have two of the uh, orange colored or Ceylon. Pick up another one, go through there, through the bead, and then back through the second bead, and then back up. Always be exiting in the last bead you put on so you can add a new bead. So now we have three beads of the orange done and we need five. So I'm going to make a circle and go back through this bead, like so. Go back down that same bead. And back up in this one. And exit through your last bead. And that should be good and secured. Now pick up another this will be our fifth one, two, three, four, and this is our fifth color, fifth orange one. So we're exiting here. We're going to go back up into the last bead we put on. Now we want to kind of keep them tight together, so go back into this bead, and then go back up into the bead you just put on, and then you should be able to pull this nice and tight. So that's what we have so far. Now pick up, we're going back to our, our copper color or brown. We have our five, so now we're going to put one brown one and one clear one on. And we're going to do this by reinforcing it. So we got to go down it. Now we go back up into the orange bead and pull it nice and tight and then back down into the brown bead. Okay, now we have one more bead to put on, and it's a clear one, so we'll go this way, making a circle, back up into that bead, into the brown one, and back out into the clear one. Alright, so now you should have 
nine beads across. You have a clear brown, five orange, and a brown and a clear. Now, again for brick stitch, it's all about working on your thread bridges. I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but there is thread bridges between all the uh, beads. And every time you do a new row, the first stitch you take, you have to pick up two beads. Okay? So we're going to be decreasing because we want um, our top piece to go like this. To, oops. Our top piece to go like this, to a point. So we're going to be decreasing. So pick up one of your clear ones and one of your brown ones. Skip the first thread bridge and go into the second thread bridge like so and pull those through. Now you got to, you got to always 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 um, tack down your first bead. Okay so we're gonna go up into the brown one like so from the bottom up back down into the clear the first bead of that Okay. We're just going to secure that bead in place and then go back up from the bottom up into the brown one and pull that nice and tight. Okay, so that's going to secure both those beads in place. Okay. Now we're going to make our orange middle piece here. We're only going to put on four beads. The previous row we put five in the middle and then we're going to go four, three, two, one, just like we would making a diamond. So pick up one of your middle beads here, go into the next bridge, thread bridge, then f pull your bead in place, then go from the bottom up, from the bottom of your bead to the top of your bead and pull that and lock it in place by just securing it pulling the thread tight. Pick up another orange bead, go under the next bridge, right there, pull that, and go back up into the bead from the bottom up and pull tight. Pick up another orange one, go into the next bridge from the bottom up, and pull nice and tight. Pick up one more, go into the next bridge, thread bridge, the bottom, and go back up into your bead from the bottom up. Oops. And pull your row nice and tight. So this is what you should have. Okay. Now we're, we're going into the brown, so we need to pick up a brown one, brown one, go into the next thread bridge, and go from the bottom back up, and pull this one nice and tight. So now you're going to pick up a clear one, go into the, watch this corner here of the second row, because your tail is nice and loose. So try to keep it nice and tight, and go back up into your clear bead when you're pulling this. Yeah, keep your tail nice and tight. So this doesn't get loose on you like it just did to me. Okay. And you're just going to continue this all the way up, decreasing in the middle. So putting on your first two beads. Alright, I've showed you this, how to do this in the previous video, which is the, um, the uh, pillow diamond pillow weave. You've got to skip the first one and go into the second one with two beads on your needle. So stay in sequence of your color so you're going to use a clear and a brown or whatever color you're using. Just follow your pattern and then next row here you're going to put only three orange ones or three whatever color that you're using. So I'm going to get this done and I'm going to come to the top and when you get to the top of ending your uh, last uh, middle this brown one here um, I'll come back and show you what to do to put your your earring hook on okay I'll be back okay so we've reached the top now where we have put on our last two crystal ones we finished our peach orangey color 
then our brown, and now we're at our clear. So what you're going to do to make your earring hook is pick up six 11 O's and just drop down into the next bead beside where you're exiting. And just jump across and go back up into the bead beside where you're exiting and just reinforce this six beads that you just put on. So go back up in this one and I'm going back up into the loop here. And I'm just going to reinforce this. It's two times, so one more time would be great. And then down these three. Okay. Then I'm just going to exit here. Oopsies. Exit here on the end. Exit here into this middle bead. We're going to kind of secure that top piece. And then exit into the third bead. So you're just weaving your thread through these top three beads. Like that. Now, what you're going to do is put a needle on your tail and get rid of this tail because it's going to get in your way when you start doing your fringy part. So I just like to actually have my thread, this one here, exiting all the way down where the tail is exiting. That's why I weaved my uh, needle through these three beads. So what you're going to do now is just work your needle down entire side of this row so you're exiting out where your tail is. Now we're going to go back up into the second bead here and we're just going to tie off our tail. So I'm going to tie it off in this side because when we finish weaving through here we'll be tying off on that side. That way we're not on both sides tying off and ending up breaking beads. So I'm just going to go into these beads here going to go between the two beads and I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot twice around the loop, pull it tight and go into two beads on the side. Pull that knot inside and do it again. Tie off your carefully and into two beads, three beads, whatever. And now you're just going to weave down through some beads. So I'm just going to go through the middle here. Lose this tail. I'm just weaving down some beads in the middle. Now our tail is out of the way. Okay. Now we're at the bottom on this side here. So when we finish on this side, we'll be able to tie off on here and not have all these knots uh, interfere with our um, half hitch. So what I did in these earrings here is I did them kind of you can do whatever pattern you want. I just kind of like this kind of the way the V shape can, oops, the way the V shape continued up here. So we continued it down here and just continued doing the V shape. That's why they kind of look like feathers to me. So first off, you're going to pick up two clear ones. And this is where I'm using my three millimeter crystals now. And I'm going to pick up one clear three millimeter. Crystal AB, one orange one, 
one clear one, and five of these crystal beads, seed beads. Sorry, five, three. You're going to pick up three. So this is what you have so far. You're going to pick up one of your six millimeters and one more clear um, 11 ohm. So that's what I have on my needle. I have two three millimeter clear, uh, three millimeter orange, three millimeter clear, three 11 ohms, a six millimeter, and an 11 ohm. So bring those all the way down to your project, like so. Take this last bead you put on and skip it. So get that out of your way. And go back up through all these beads, including the base bead where you came out of. So I'm going to try and do this all in one pass. And I'm going through the base bead, this one here, on the base. And pull this through. Now, when you're pulling your fringe, your Try not to pull it so tight. If you pull this really tight, you're going to end up warping it like this. See? You don't want to do that. You want to have it dangling. You want it nicely dangling. So leave a little tiny, tiny hair of a piece of thread between this and the base. So then you're going to go into the next bead beside where you exited on the base. And it does get a little tight, so I'm using pliers to get through without bending my needle. And pull your thread through. Okay? So make sure when you pull your thread through into this second bead, you didn't pull this one super tight. Because it's easy to do. And now, to make this a little longer, I'm going to pick up three of these clear beads. A three millimeter crystal, another three millimeter crystal, and another three millimeter crystal, and five 11 O's, and a six millimeter, and another 11 O. So, this is what you'll have on your, your thread. Okay? So, you have three you put on first, three millimeter, three of them whatever colors you're using, 5 11 O's, a 6 millimeter, and another 11 O. Skip the last one you put on and go back up through all these beads. And don't skip any because you will see it. And including going into the bead you came out of. Okay. Now somehow that got too loose for me. Right. And then just pull it nice and nice and snug up against the base but not too tight that you warp it. So now you've got two sections done. And you can see they're already the more beads you add up top or the bottom, the more it's gonna make it into a point. Now you need to go drop down beside the next bead, which is the orange bead. So you're facing down towards the fringe area. Okay, and making sure you didn't pull that second one you put on super tight. Alright. Okay, make sure it's got a little bit of play in it. All right. Now you're going to pick up some orange ones. So now I'm going to pick up two orange ones and two clear ones. A three millimeter crystal clear, a three millimeter orange one, and a three millimeter crystal clear. Then you're going to pick up seven 11 O's. Seven of your 11 O's. One six millimeter and one 11 ohm. And bring that down to your, your base. Okay, skip that one. Go back up through all of these. Through them all, including the bead you came out of. And I kind of need to do that by itself. And pull this up. 
So if it does that, just hold on to the very last bead you put on and pull it. Okay, don't pull it too tight. Don't warp your section. If it warps, just kind of give it a little tug. And now you're going to exit into the next bead, putting on your next fringe. Making sure you didn't pull this one super tight. Okay, so now you're going to pick up three orange ones. Three orange, two clear, a crystal clear, an orange one, three millimeter, and a clear three millimeter. Then you're going to pick up nine of these. Nine of your, your um, clear beads, a six millimeter, and another 11 ohm. So this is what you should have. Skip the last one. And always double check to make sure you have all your beads before you go back up into there, because I've done that where I've missed the beads up in top here. It's easy to do. Okay, going through them, and now I need to go through the bead I came out of on the base. Okay, so this is where you want to hold it down, hold your last bead, and give it a pull. And pray you don't have any knots like I just got. tail doesn't want to come out. My tail is stuck. Uh oh. I think I split my thread somewhere in here. Oh well, I'm just going to cut my tail off. I'm afraid it comes through now. Nope. It's snagged in there. There we go. <laughs> okay, so that's what I hate about Nymo. You're going to split it no matter what you do. Make sure you don't pull this one too, too tight. Go down, down into the fifth bead. So this will be the middle of your fringe. Okay. And this will be the last time you do increasing. So you're going to pick up four of your orange ones or whatever color you're using, your middle beads, two clear, 11 O's, three millimeter crystal in clear orange and a clear, so you're picking up three three millimeters. You're going to pick up 11 of your 11 O's. Eleven one six millimeter and one clear. Okay, skip this one and work your way back up through all the beads. And including the bead on the base. Really, it didn't help me again, thank God. Okay, so now we're going to make sure this is nice and snug. And that's it for one half of your um, earring. So now you're going to start decreasing. You're going to go into the next bead beside where you are going to begin your fringe. Okay. And now you're just going to uh, decrease. So skip this one here and now you're going to repeat this next one here. So you're going to put on, uh, just follow each strand here and put on exactly in order starting with the largest to the smallest amount to your outer edge. Okay, and I'll come back after you've gotten that done. I've got that done. And you do the same thing. So skip the middle one. We're not going to repeat the middle one. You're going to repeat this one by picking up 
uh, three of your orange color and two and then continue on down here so it's going to get smaller in here 11 9 7 5 3 okay I'll be back okay so I've reached the end of putting my last uh, dangle on or um, strand of beads here so we have completed doing the whole entire earring all we have to do now is tie off the same way we tied off our tail. We're going to tie off our um, our working thread and we're going to do it the same way. Just wrap up two knots or make two wraps, loops, or two wraps through your loop, pull it tight and go up through two beads. Like so. Bring your thread between the two beads on the side and tie two loops. One not loop, one loop and two wraps. Pull it tight through two beads. And we're gonna do it one more time. This time we're only gonna tie one knot. And then we're gonna work our way over and then we're going to go weave our thread back and forth up and down just a couple of times Oops. Um, then it makes the thread more secure in this Oopsies. oh I went through the wrong bead Hopefully I didn't snag my tail. Which we get. There we go. Alright. Down. Try that again. Go back up. And I'm just working on beads that are beside each other. Staying with so my thread path doesn't get out of whack. And I'm gonna go up some beads and cut this off now. It's good and secured. And that's your beautiful little uh, dangle. Nice little fringe on it. I think it's gorgeous. Now to put our earring wire on, you're going to take your earring hook, you're going to open your loop, twist it outward towards you whatever way, but don't don't pull it apart. Always twist your loops and twist it back in. Nice and snug up against the post. Without bending the earring, which I just did. And there you have it. Really beautiful pair of earrings. You can make these in endless colors. You can go with every shirt, top, dress you wear. And they're not super long. So they would, they're really nice for people with short necks. And there's your earrings. Get this stuff out of my way here. So I can put the blue ones. I really love the blue. The blue ones are gorgeous. And there's the other blue one. So there's... I'd say it took me an hour to make one pair, so you can whip these up in like a flash. They almost look like a peacock feather. Probably be really pretty in a bunch of different colors. So if you make these and you use all different colors, I'll post it on iBead for you so I can have a look at um, your earrings, at your colors you chose, and the beads. I'm pretty sure you can use any bead in here. You don't have to be what I used here. You can use check, you can use toho, you can probably use 10 o's and different size beads, 6 o's, 8 o's, whatever you want. Try it with all different kinds, make it your own. I really hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. Um, it's a nice summer pair of earrings. And I will see you all soon on the next video. Have a great week. Bye bye.